Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw brindle fur in pastels. Now the first thing that I want to mention here is why I've decided to use pastel pencils from start to finish. Now with the brindle fur, the way that the light and dark hairs are almost mixed into various layers, I didn't want to start off with a dark to light technique with my pan pastels because if I then mix in with my lights and my darks, I don't want there to get that muddying up of my colors. Now with brindle fur, I want to be making sure that I've got the markings accurate. That's very, very important and the variation in the lights and the darks. So by making sure that I'm using my pastel pencils, as you can see here for my base layer, I'm just basically reinforcing the subtle values first and then building up from there. I just felt that if I started with my traditional dark to light techniques that there was a chance that I could end up with those colours becoming muddy and just a little bit muted and I didn't want that. So to avoid that from happening I just felt I could get more of that accurate base layer with my pastel pencils. Now if you've seen many of my other videos here on YouTube you know that I put a lot of focus on my base layer stage. I think that it makes it so much easier for us to build up our details on top. Now as I come back in with my pastel pencils here, I'm following my three main fur techniques. So that's the fur direction, fur length and fur thickness. I've got a video here on YouTube, it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur in pastels. I'll link that in the description below if it's of interest. And I talk in there about many different things but one of those is good pencil technique. So I'm making sure that my hand is always focusing on how I should move that pencil following the curve and direction of the fur. Now for this study that is available on my Patreon all as a real time tutorial, I'm explaining everything in the moment while I'm drawing. I'm able to then explain why I'm moving the pencil in a specific way, how to adjust the pressure, how to hold the pencil, why I'm using specific colours or the layering process. All of this enables that final result to have more depth. Now what I want to be focusing on here is making sure that I've got lots of layers of subtlety. Now again, this is something that I speak about all the time because the layers of subtlety are what's going to help to build up additional depth. Now one thing we don't want to do, regardless of the fur type, the colour, the markings that we are drawing, is we don't want to jump to using our brightest pencils first directly on top of our base layer. We want to be adding everything else beneath that first. So fur that's closest to the skin needs to be mapped in initially and then you build up from there. Now the, I do have exceptions, obviously there's no rules in art. If I'm drawing a particularly light coloured dog then I may then put a light layer of pastel down first but that will depend on the reference photo that I'm working from. But most of the time I'm working with a darker base layer and then I'm building up my lighter highlights from there. Now the other thing that you'll notice is I like to work in small manageable chunks. One thing that can happen with brindle fur, the same with something like a dalmatian with spots, is we can get very carried away just drawing a load of random shapes and then before we know it, it doesn't look like that reference photo. Now the brindle markings of this dog would be very unique to that person's pet, so if this was a commission I'd want to make sure that I've got those accurate to that reference photo. So I want to be making sure for me personally that I don't rush through any stages. So in order for me to avoid doing that, I like to break it up into one or two square inches, a very small section, get that to about 80-90% complete, and then I can move on to the next part. Now before I know it, the section that I'm working on is already looking like that reference photo, and I start to feel more motivated and then determined to keep pushing through that project. So if you do find that you're getting a bit of artist block or you are hesitating throughout the drawing process, working on smaller sections can really help. Now I briefly mentioned a few moments ago how I would adjust my layering process for my base layer depending on the reference photo. Now the section that I'm going to be working on here, this has a strong highlight on the left part of the shoulder. So here I could demonstrate exactly that difference in approach by whether or not I'm working with a dark to light technique or a light to dark technique. So again, this is all going to depend on the light source. Now I wanted to make sure that I had this highlight on the shoulder nice and bright. So to ensure that I did that, I had a bit more of a lighter layer put down first and then I could darken it up gradually if I needed to. Now even at this stage I am following the fur direction, so I'm using my combination of Carbofello, Pitt, Derwent and Caran pencils 
to build up that initial stage. But here I'm still not over blending, so you can still see some of the way that I'm curving my pencil strokes. And this is already helping for me to visualize what my end result should be. Now contrast is something that I talk about in all tutorials. So because I've now got my light section on the shoulder mapped in and I'm gonna to continue to put in my lighter pencils on top, and I have got the top right corner looking much darker, my contrast is already starting to come together. If I hadn't have used as many dark pencils, the fur is not gonna have that same depth. So I do wanna be making sure that I've got my dark values nice and dark, and then I'm building up my light values until I can see that brightness achieved compared to my reference photo. Now the wonderful thing about pastels is they are incredibly versatile. So you can mix your layers, dark to light, light to dark, you can start off with a dark base foundation, put some lights in, and then if you need to darken it up later, you can go back in and do so. It's very forgiving as long as you work with light layers. Now, what I mean by that is not the light color of that pencil, but actually how much pastel you're applying at the layering stages. So let's say you use pan pastels for your base layer. You don't wanna put a load of pan pastel pigment on your surface to start with because your pencil still need the tooth of the paper to grip that surface in order for your pastel to then, and your pencil strokes to then be visible. So if you're using your pencils and you feel like it's gliding over the surface, almost like it's slippery, then that's an indication that you have filled the tooth of the paper. Now, one of the questions that I get asked frequently is, do I use fixatives? Now, I personally don't in my pastel work. I feel that they change the color far too much and it's something that I've actually experienced has ruined a couple of my pieces. So instead, I like to layer as I'm showing here and all of my other tutorials where I am using pan pastels. And then I like to just make sure that I am building it up in stages, making sure to only use a light amount of pastel with each layer. This therefore means that you can layer endlessly. I've never got to the point where I filled the tooth of the paper. Even when this study was finished, if I needed to, I could have continued to add many more layers on top. Now, if you do want to use a fixative, you want to be making sure that you're using light layers. So again, you don't want to have one heavy layer of fixative because I find that that's going to cause more damage. And from my experience, I actually had the pastel almost look like it dissolved with that fixative. So you want to hold that spray can further away from your surface and you want to then be able to do maybe one or two or two or three very light layers rather than one heavy layer. I would also recommend if you are using a fixative to hold your spray can or whatever it is that you're using further away from your artwork so you've got a bit of distance. Otherwise, if you hold it too close, you're going to end up with a lot of fixative in one area of your artwork, which again can cause a whole range of other problems. So just make sure it's nice, even light layers. Now, as I progress through here, this one section of the fur, it did have some white markings and I want to be making sure that again, I'm focusing on my contrast. So I'm starting off with a little bit more of a lighter layer and then I can gradually build up some darks on top and then go back in with my highlights. So the contrast here, by having this lighter section of fur in the lower corner, the darker markings in the top being nice and dark, and then that lovely warm highlight on the left hand side of the shoulder, all of this eventually is going to come together when the study or the portrait is finished and help to create something that's far more realistic because I focused on that light source. Now I've mentioned a few times about how important the fur direction is when using your pencils, but the position of the highlights and shadows following that light source is also just as important. This is also what's going to help to build up more three dimensional shape to the portrait and the animal that we're drawing. Now take this area here on the highlight across the shoulder. This dog is a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, so it has quite a lot of muscle across the shoulders, and I wanna make sure that I've captured that. Everything there and how the light bounces off of those structures is gonna to help to, again, as I say, build up more realism in that portrait. So this area here is just classic of that. You've got that fur direction that curves over with the highlight, it dips down to a shadow, it then curves back over to another highlight, and then across the side widest part of that muscle down towards where it joins onto the rib cage. So that there is helping to build up the main structure across that front leg. So if we don't capture the fur direction and the light source, it's just gonna be a bit more of a two dimensional feel. So obviously we want to try to avoid that as much as we can. Now, as I continue to build up the brindle fur here, again, working with a bit more of a lighter section, and then I'm gradually darkening this up in stages, making sure to not have any harsh start and stop points. 
I also want to be focusing on which pencils to use. Now this is something that I'm asked all the time is how do I know what colours to select from the pencils in front of us. Now this is something that I do cover thoroughly in all of my tutorials on Patreon. I've got a dedicated giraffe tutorial there where I specifically show the one main way that I like to select the pencils and the colours that I should be using based on the reference photo that we're working from. Now what that does is it's helping us to simplify that process. So when I look at a section of a photograph, I'm thinking, is it a warm colour or is it a cool colour? That's going to help for me to isolate which sort of pencils I should be looking at. Then it's basically on how light or how dark that colour should be. Now, if you are interested in seeing that aspect of the drawing process, then the giraffe tutorial that I have on Patreon may be of interest. And as I said, my Patreon and all that information is linked in the description below. Now when I'm working with my pencils here for the base layer, it comes together fairly quickly, but I do want to be making sure that again I'm mapping in the brindle markings, so any of the darker stripes or some of those faded spots. Now they're not spots like Dalmatians, they don't have as much of the harsh edge, but you do have a group or cluster of darker hairs that form the impression of a spot type marking. So all of those I want to try to get in. Now basically that helps for me to have main reference points. Now reference points are something that I talk about all the time in terms of making something easier to visualise. So if I've got something in that reference photo that I notice first, it might be a marking, it could be a specific highlight or a dark shadow. If I put those in first, I know exactly then where I should be in relation to the photo and that one section that I'm working on. Just having that in place can help to make it much more easier to tackle and approach going forward. So this one section here, this base layer is perfect. There are no harsh edges. I've got a real nice indication of where some of the brindle markings are and that base layer in between is not too dark. I can now come back in with my highlights and start to add in more contrast. Now one big tip, this can make a huge difference with how realistic your portraits can be. If you've used your lightest pencil, let's say you've used white and you physically can't go any brighter than that, but you do want your highlights to look lighter, what you can do is darken up next to it. So by darkening that up, you're automatically going to make your highlights look brighter. Now this is often something that can happen anyway. So again, this goes back to contrast and values. By hyping up your shadows and your highlights, that animal is going to have far more of a three dimensional look. But as I said, if you do have any areas where even your shadows, you want those to look darker, but you've used your darkest pencil. If you add a few highlights and lighten up what's next to it, then that's going to make that shadow look darker. And that's just something that can happen in general. We can be a little bit worried about going too dark in case we can't lighten it back up again. But with pastels, as I've said, they're so forgiving and versatile. It's going to really help to make sure that you've got your lights and darks right. So I do really hope that this tutorial has been useful. If it was, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up. It makes a huge difference to my channel. I also upload a couple of videos to YouTube every week. So if you'd like to get notified of that content, then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell button. If you've got any art related questions, then feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. And with the real-time version on Patreon, you get the reference photo, line art and full material list. And as I've said, I'm going to put all of the information for that in the description. Now, Patreon's very flexible, so you can stay for as long as you want or you can cancel at any time. I'm going to upload another video in the next few days. But as always, thank you so much for watching.